So we did a reaction to the trailer for Leatherface a while ago, and I gotta admit, I was cautiously optimistic, shall we say? You know, I know that you're all excited, blood, gut, score. That's great, that's cool, I love it. I don't we want- We love gore around here. Yes, yes, yes. However, I don't want to know that Leatherface had a bad childhood. So, what happened? Ah, let's find out. So this is a spoiler-filled review, and if you haven't seen the movie, check it out! Alright, you're back, which means you've seen it. Uh, just so that we are all on the same page, my worst fears have come true. Uh, it's, what are they, Dante? Uh, what I said in the beginning! Um, it's basically about Leatherface's bad childhood. Well, we uh, all have a bad childhood. Yeah, I know. So, eh. All right, you know what? Uh, let's just get into the likes. All right, you wanted to get into likes? We're here, so what do you got? Throw it out there. I like the gore. Ah, we all like Yay, the gore. Yes, yes. This actually, you know, it wasn't over the top. It might have even been a little bit less than what I expected, but there definitely was some gore. Yes. Um, you know, I did like the scene, actually, where he was... Uh, shoving the psychiatrist's face into the glass before it breaks. Yeah. Right? That because cool. It is cool because, you know, glass doesn't just break the instant you hit it. And so we got that extra little boom, boom, boom. So that was awesome. Um, what gore is on your list, shall we say? I liked it when the kid, um, I think as soon as when he got older, he took the chainsaw to the copper that went rogue. Mm. And he shoved the chainsaw right in his ah, intestines. Yes. Okay. Mm. Nah. Mm. Well, you actually, I think that we, we, we talked a little bit, I think, where I watched it, you were excited just when the young kid picked up the... Oh, yeah. Okay. Kids with chainsaws? There needs to be more of them. That, yeah, well, okay. Now, I do like that scene as well, but for a different reason. And I like the scene because... The overbearing mother is saying, okay, you know, you're you're clearly very young. I don't know what that kid was. What do we want to say? Eight, nine, ten years old. Yeah, probably around there. Around there. And we've got this guy, and so here's a chance I'll go kill him. And that's the mom. Boom, boom, boom. Do the, do. And I really like the fact that the kid struggles and eventually can't do it. That's really important. That's a big deal because, honestly, you know, if you're, if, I may not like the premise that we're going to learn about the bad childhood that Leatherface had, but if you're going to go down that road, at least give me something that says he's not just a mindless killer, you know, or to, to explain to me how he becomes the mindless killer from the, from the movies. Uh, whether he is or not, that's debatable as well. So the fact that the, that the kid put it down shows me that there was something. Right. Um, and then, of course, he winds up with... Your favorite, a bunch of mental patients. They freaked out. Yes, of course. They escaped. Well, didn't the mom help them escape pretty much? Kind of. Well, she I didn't help them No, she was specifically. In, yeah, she was in the asylum, and that's a different story. But, but she um, helped, you know, yeah, but there was open a, that door, and then all the mental patients wreaked havoc throughout the mental asylum. So if you like mental patients freaking out, that's what you'll see. Yeah, it's no one flew over this cuckoo's nest. But okay, <laughs> regardless, um, what I think, uh, not necessarily that scene, but maybe sort of, that it contributes to is the overarching question of the film is nature versus nurture. All right, age old. They are obviously going to pick a road, a path, but you basically have this overbearing mother and this sort of you know disregard for any kind of respect or morals or, or, or you know intelligence or the understanding of the ways of, of society. Right. Um, but he's ripped out of that, and except that he is thrown into a mental institute, which may not be the best template <laughs> for responsibility and social understanding. It's not good for anybody. Not good for anybody. Uh, however, it's at least not the terrible, horrible thing. So then the question becomes is, was he just born that way, and he was always going to wind up? Or was there something that happened? And so one of the things that I kind of liked was, was that they towed the line pretty close right up to the scene where his brother is killed. 
and he basically snaps. 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 Snap, crackles, and pops. And at that point, I guess you gotta say that the nature took over. You know, he, he lost what little humanity he had remaining. He did. Um, and he went down that road, he went down hard and fast, and obviously it culminated with him chopping off the sympathetic female's head. The one that he liked. The one that he liked, right. And that's that's important because then, then the transition is complete. God, that was so cool. Yep, there you go. Uh, and, you know, speaking of the brother who dies, however, I got to give a little bit of props, a little bit of respect. Um, I like the little switcheroony that they pulled. Oh, yeah, because I was like, oh, yeah, that's Leatherface. And right, like, when you're, when you're yeah. first in the mental institution and you see the big guy with the curly hair, then you're like, okay, that's Leatherface. This is build. It's very clear that's what he becomes. Right. And I was like, no, no, no. That was one of the other brothers. This is Leatherface. And here's his transition, so to speak. <laughs> um... And then, you know, the last thing that I guess I kind of liked, um, and this was, uh, you know, the intent of the movie going forward, so I guess I liked it because it had accomplished this role, and that was a, a, a very clear indication uh, and understanding of who these people were of the family to what they became in the 1974 version. Right. You know, you saw a dad who was already decrepit, <laughs> the walking corpse in 74. You saw the two brothers, the roles that they became, and then obviously Leatherface, all surrounded by the concept that there was an overbearing mother that was the glue of the family once she was gone. And of course, we don't really find out what happens, but by 1974's Chainsaw Massacre, they are off the rails because they don't have her in their lives, you know, holding everything together. So that aspect of it, I certainly did enjoy. All right, on to the dislikes. I know as a funeral director, there's always something that you have issue with, so I'll let you go ahead and <laughs> regurgitate. Well, yes. uh, when the um, two mental patients and the three people, mm -hmm. you know, went into that old rundown trailer, mobile home, whatever, whatever it was. was. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, that girl walked into the bathroom, she saw a guy that probably used to live there commit right. suicide. Yes. Or he's already been dead like a couple days ago or a week or uh, who knows? Who he, knows. He doesn't look good. But if but. somebody has been dead for that long, they're not going to look like almost, he almost looked plastic. Oh, honestly. okay. Like, it's something you can get out of like a, you know, Spirit Halloween or something. Ah, yet another case <laughs> of non-realistic dead bodies. Oh, I hate those. You do realize <laughs> they can't that like dead bodies don't look good. Yeah, they do. Well, okay, you <laughs> twisted whatever. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, so anyway, this guy, if he was probably dead, let's say this guy may have been dead, like a month. Month, maybe. Probably. Yeah. Okay. So what he, are we talking here? He would have been like probably bloated with all um what is it, liquid underneath his tissues and his skin would be peeling off and it'd be gross, it'd be grimy. But that might and be then better she, for a then, horror movie. I'm surprised yeah. But you know, I guess they didn't go that route only because of the very next scene when they're fucking, she's making out with that corpse. Yeah, and then it looks even more plastic. Well, not only more plastic, but it was slimy before and now it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I no, but dead bodies don't look like that. No, no, and they, oh. no, no. So, okay, well, yeah, I knew that was a pet peeve of yours, so I figured that was going to be one. Uh, now on to my pet peeves. <laughs> I am sick to death of these cardboard cookie cutter characters that they just drop in. Not just a horror movies. I'll be air. I'll be fair. I mean, it's almost every damn movie out there right now. And of course, we get two of them in this. We get the road cop uh, that, this is my big brother, the road cop that kills the, you know, in this case, the, the girl in cold blood in front of fellow officers. And I don't know why, this movie kind of reminded me of The Devil's Rejects. Wow, well, yeah, it totally did. But it just, you can throw a million, oh, you know, he's pissed off, his daughter was killed, and he, you know, he blames the world, and it's Texas, and it's all, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit, okay? There's going to be somebody in that group of officers, and I don't care what year it is or whatever else, that's going to call internal affairs or is going to have a problem with it. You know, you don't get to be a cop 
and then just throw it all the way and start randomly discriminating, murdering innocent people without any repercussions, without anybody on your vote, in front of the people. Like if she, if he had done it off with nobody witnessing, I could just let it slide. But there was like, what, four or five guys there that yeah. all saw it. One made a little wild protest, but nothing, and then just went about his business. And the second, of course, it, again, in tons and tons of movies, is the, the, the head of the mental institution was just this evil doctor. You know, he was just the evilest of the evil. Like, completely ignorant of the fact that, you know, to become a doctor, not only do you take the Hippocratic Oath, but just to even go into that field and to suffer for, you know, the seven years it takes, you know, it, it, it creates a certain mentality. And yes, some doctors have different bedside manners and everything else, but you're just, you're not just going to be like, oh, I have a complete disregard and I want nothing but to keep my patients and do horrible, terrible things to them. Well, I have a rebuttal to that, too. You do? All right, well, throw it up. What do you got? Well, I know back in the old days, How you know, old? <laughs> around that time, okay. was that, like 1965, they had mental institutions where those uh, patients really did suffer a lot. They didn't know, no, no, I understand know. anything okay, about no. their condition. Ah, okay, now, I will 100% agree with that. The doctors simply didn't know that what they were doing is wrong and the patients did suffer tremendously. No discounting that. Where I'm having the issue with is, is the doctor didn't, they, they didn't write him and they didn't present him as him saying, I'm not gonna let these patients go because I think what I'm doing is healing them and helping them. Even though I'm wrong, that's what I feel and think, it's just, oh, no, I'm an evil doctor that is just, you can't do anything to my patients and I'm going to do whatever I want and they're mine and, and screw the law and I'm going to throw this bureaucratic BS. And, and in some cases, and maybe not necessarily in this movie, but some of the other ones, they do go to a point where they are actually hurting them intentionally. Now, yeah, they are. They were. Well, they didn't think they were, though. No, there, there were instances of nurses and doctors hurting these well, people. There because... always are, but I'm saying on a, on a broad sense. If you're bringing up that time frame. There were a lot yes. of doctors in that time frame that were like, oh, electric shop therapy works. They believed that. They were wrong, but they believed it. They didn't believe, oh, I'm hurting the patient. Okay, but some did. Yes, some, some did. did. But and not maybe all. Maybe it was this doctor that did. I don't know. All right, fine. We will we will agree to disagree. We will agree to have further discussion. We will have you please discuss it amongst yourselves in the comment section below. Um, then I have to say that even though we like the gore, there I wasn't did, enough, enough of, of it. it. This is, you know. Uh, not, not, I mean, it's Leatherface, Sex and Chainsaw Massacre, which honestly didn't have a tremendous amount of gore in it. But quite honestly, outside of the scene you brought up with the chainsaw and the blood and the guts and it going in, there wasn't a whole lot. We had a few, you know, the stabbings in it, whatever, shotgun, whatever. But we really didn't have a lot, you know. Um, and if you're not going to do a lot of gore, then at least give us a lot of scares. And I don't really have a lot of those either. And then my other pet peeve are logic gaps on this a million times and the weird thing is is if you watch the q a for found footage 3d or you watch our review of it i actually talk about how mr kim hankel himself who got an executive producer credit on this aka a check in the back pocket and nothing else and kudos to you for doing that um sat for a year with the director and writer of found footage 3d saying that doesn't make sense that's not logical. That doesn't work. This was not done on this movie. He did not have that input, and that bothers the hell out of me because you brought the fact that we've got the two main male-female psychos, and then there are three cohorts, you know, the, the nurse, Weatherface, and his brother. That's a three-on-two situation, and there were countless opportunities, countless, for them to overpower them. I mean, hell, one time they were even kind of holding them at bay with a knife. Not a gun, so you could have bum rushed them. They had their backs turned to them. Right. They went off and had sex and left them by themselves, un, you know, shackled or, or and it's like, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, it, so that, that I was just, uh, you know, total logical gap, total logical fallacy. I have a huge, huge problem with that. Um, and I gotta say, probably the last thing for me that I did dislike about this movie, it's a little bit esoteric, it's a little weird. Um, this movie, as far as I'm concerned, had the names and the characters from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but not 
the spirit or the look or the feel. Yeah. It didn't have that, mm-hmm. that Tobe Hoper style to it. You know, the, the, a lot of the magic of Texas Chainsaw Massacre was not just that, oh, we, you know, I mean, honest to God, Leatherface was in a handful of scenes. I mean, he was not the focus. He ended up being, but that wasn't the intent. The intent was is that we've got this grimy, gritty, this situation where we don't know what's going to happen next, and, and the shit that does happen is absolutely batshit crazy, and we've never seen anything like it before. Did, I've seen everything in this before. I, I, it wasn't crazy. The people, you know, were starting to act crazy, but not... Again, it might have just been that it, it was just lacking that, that Tobe Hooper signature style. Um, but yes, we had the characters and names, but I guess maybe, like, okay, here's a question. Let's throw this movie up as horror movie ABC and just remove the leather face. You know, at the end of the movie, we just got an overbearing mom and a crazy hillbilly family. Would it have been any different? That mmm is a pretty good indication. Mm. So yeah, we're gonna go with the mm <laughs> on this one. So it is pinhead time, and I am very curious or fascinated. I have a sneaky suspicion you might have liked this a lot more than I did, but how many pinheads are you gonna give it? I am gonna give it two because it has the man leather face in there and it's sort got of. a little bit of gore. So mm, you know, yeah. you got the gore and you got leather face, so and not a lot else. I no, guess. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. From your standpoint, yeah, is what I'm saying. So okay, two. all right. That's fair. Two it is. Okay, well. Hmm. So, I, I said in the beginning that I would, and, and even in the trailer reaction, I was uh, cautiously optimistic. I did not want to know that Leatherface had a bad childhood. I still don't want to know. Um, you brought up the fact that it did have a couple of nice things, but not a lot. Um, in fact, the not a lot outweighed the nice things for me. Uh, however, I myself am also going to give it two pinheads uh, for similar reasons uh, and I really thought we could have had a lot more and then the point that was made in the dislikes take the name off and it doesn't really alter anything at all yeah. so um, it's gonna be easy your two pinheads my two pinheads this is going to be a two pinhead movie so let us know in the comments section below what you thought obviously there's gonna be some discussion about this one like the video subscribe to the channel and yeah this has been bugging me the whole time what is with this weather man oh well I wore it for you me this says I'm with Creepy. You talking about, is it some other guy? Maybe one of the crew or something? Is it, oh, it's not that guy, is it? Tell me it's not that guy.